Good morning, everybody. I am coming to you today because I have a devotion I want to read. And it's all about when you're homeschooling. Um, it's a five-minute five devotions for the homeschool mom. This can play into anybody's world that has kids. It is so important. Um, the topic today is relationships over academics. And to me, that is super, super important because <laughs> as homeschool parents, we homeschool for a reason. And so um, I just want to read this devotion to you and then kind of talk about it. So it says, once I heard a quote that said something to this effect, rules without relationship lead to rebellion. This is so true. It goes along with something the Spirit has been whispering into my heart, it has been encouraging me to focus on the relationships with my children more than their academics. This doesn't necessarily come easily or naturally to me, especially with all the added pressure I sometimes carry as a homeschooling parent. Yet I know beyond a doubt that what the Lord is telling me is far more important than my worries about math, history, or any other academic sh subject. So those of you who are just popping on, I'm doing a little devotion here. This is our encouragement for today. Let's focus on our relationships, our heart connections with our children. The rest will come. The academics will better flow when our hearts are bonded and our children feel a sense of safety and trust with us as parents. So the scripture they used is, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. And the prayer for that is, Father, forgive us when we have put more emphasis on academics, learning, academic learning, than we have on our relationship and heart connections with our children. Help us to love as you love us in the way we interact with them on a daily basis. So the big thing about me as a homeschool parent, I'm more of that relaxed, um, let's say, we don't have necessarily like a, you're going to do math at this time, you're going to do history at this time, you're going to do um science at this time so we do classical conversations but it's all um the foundations part is off of songs and so we can do them in the car we can do them outside we can do them in the living room we can do them down here in the basement we can do them anywhere we want to we can do them in a restaurant we can do them at a friend's house so the big thing with me is there's times that we live on a farm we have firewood that we're having to get ready for the winter because if we don't have our firewood we're gonna have a harder time heating our home because we use firewood as our main source of heat we do have backup but we'd rather not use it when we can use what we have on our farm so on those days we're doing work ethic instead of academics and so they can you know learn how to provide for the home and keep us warm. We have a barn to build before the winter sets in. And so we take times and we go out there and we work on our barn, but we're interacting with our children, building relationships with them instead of nothing against people who put their kids in public school. But I'm of the mindset, I don't want the, you sit down, you have to do your book studies and this is what you're going to do right now. Now we move to this and there's no real relationships going on, no bonding. The interaction isn't there. Um, so for me, I don't want my home to look like a public school setting. I don't want the, um, the books necessarily that you just sit down and you have to do this and you have to do this. We do write papers. Um, he is in a class where we're learning how to write papers, but guess what? We didn't write one last week for this week because we had firewood to do and we had a barn to build and we just didn't have time. And to me, it's not the end of the world that we didn't do a paper. It didn't affect him one bit as far as, um, his studies go. Does he know 
everything he's learned for the last eight weeks as far as his foundations go with his history, his English, his science, his Latin, his math. Yes, he does. And so it's very important to not make your academics for your children the utmost importance. It's more about that relationship that you have with them so that when they're struggling with anything, be it a relationship with somebody else, be it schoolwork, be it when they get older and they have um, problems at work, they're going to have a bond with you that they can come to you and talk to you and ask you, what do I do about this? Whereas if all you're worried about is their grades and their academics and, you know, what are they going to learn? <laughs> Think about where you are today in your life and what do you still use that you learned in school? So don't put so much emphasis on you have to know this, you have to get it right now. Every child learns at a different pace, at a different level. Sometimes we watch history last night. We had um, our essentials for last week was on um, Alfred the Great. So we found some um, cartoon stories on YouTube and put them on for him to watch. It told the history. Did he need to read it in a book? No, he didn't have to. He could watch it. And there is his history. So he got to, you know, I worked all... Mm, I didn't work yesterday. We had a, our class, our community yesterday. And so we were busy all day from we left the house about 7.30 in the morning. We got home at 6 o'clock at night because we had basketball afterwards. About 6.30, I had to vote. Um, and so I was spent for the day. We did do our schooling, but yet he still wanted to watch something that had to do with history. And so he loves history. So we delve more into that kind of stuff. He also loves his math. You don't necessarily have to use a book for math. You can do it on a whiteboard. And so he has a game that's called N2K. He gets three numbers and he has to find different ways to come up with. <coughs> um, he has like all these boxes and it's um, like one through 36. Sometimes I give him more numbers. Um, and he has to come up with ways to solve how to get every number marked off his board with those three numbers, be it two, three, five, four, three, six, but he uses powers. He uses addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and that's where he loves math right now. And so I'm not pushing, oh, you've got to know this right now. You've got to know this right now. Guess what? He still has how many more years of learning that's considered elementary, middle school, high school? So we take it at our own pace. Last year, he wasn't interested in math. And so it was a little bit more of a struggle. This year, he has this game and absolutely loves it. A friend of ours, um, their child didn't know how to skip count, some high numbers. And so they made a game on the floor and they would put um, question marks and have missing numbers. And then they would have to go back when they hit that question mark, skip count all the numbers that they just stepped across and then tell what that number is that's missing and then go across. <coughs> and so every child learns differently. So the biggest thing that 